Welcome to the 2016 Sigchrome Project Car. Each month, we are taking you behind the scenes of an innovative, handcrafted car build. And for your chance to win this beast, simply purchase any quality Sigchrome product and enter your details at winwithsigchrome.com.au. This is George, the boss man at Python Vehicles. He's been building Cobras for 30 years and he puts his products to the test on the racetrack, taking on some of the world's best sports cars. This is going to be one of a kind Cobra. The man responsible for hand building the Sigchrome project car is Joe. He's George's trusted mechanic and has a real passion for his craft. If you can't do it, get out of the way, because I'll do it. And I'm Telfo, editor of Street Machine Magazine. I'm here to document the madness. Can you do me a favour? Let me do the work and you go make some phone calls up that end of the shop and leave me alone. Done. I'm Thank out you. of here. Done, dude. G'day and welcome to part four of the Sigchrome Cobra project down here at Python Vehicles Australia. As you can see the car has come along nicely. I'm going to start talking about some of the things the guys have been doing, starting with the exhaust. George, how are you going? Oh, good to see you again, Simon. As you can see, we've moved a fair bit along since you've seen it last. We've put in place our underneath the car exhaust system, yep. which will allow us to comply with the emission standards as far as the testing is concerned for registering the car. It is important, we need to do it. In saying that, there's intricate work here. Our specialist builder, Joe, who's building the car, his knowledge and extent of artistry in the exhaust system, you can see in those pipes and how difficult they are in achieving the side pipe application on this car. So we're giving the opportunity for the lucky winner to get two systems. He'll have an undercar system and he'll have a side pipe, but I can assume that he's gonna love his side pipes. It's all fun and games and that's one side and that's probably taken me a good part of three days. So just to get everything right and set up. So the other side will be much quicker. All right, we have our bell housing adapter so the gearbox can be put in behind the engine. It's all sitting here, Joe, it's looking fantastic. And I hear you've actually got a holding part in this car. It, it, it hurts me to say, but yes, I'm using HK327 Chev engine mounts. Basically, they're my engine plates, which will bolt up to the side of the engine. Chevy engine mount, that'll fit on. Bit of tubing in there, and we're all done. But I do use a Falcon transmission mount, so that, that's, that gets us back into the Ford area. And I noticed at the front, we're running manual steering. There's gonna be no air conditioning. This is a really old school muscle car, yeah? This is a full on muscle car. So it's a 60s replica. So there's no air con, there's no power steering, there's no traction control, there's no ABS. There's nothing that you don't need. It's everything that you need and that's horsepower. All right, the boys are now sitting up the steering for the car. We've got a giant Coyote motor here, it's much bigger than the LS motors, the Windsor Ford V8s that they often put in these cars. So that brings its own problems that Joe and George are working out. Boys, tell me how you're coming up with this solution. Uh, well, basically we're setting up the steering geometry um, and you probably see everything's just tacked in place for now just to sort of get everything to work out. But I'm just having a bit of a drama with some notchiness because uh, my universal is so close to my rocker cover yep. that I can't push it out any further. It's just great notchiness. So I've got to work out a system to allow us to get a smooth steering. Once I get my steering sorted, I'm going to reverse the alternator. Yep. And have it mounted roughly there. It's got to be in line with the water pump pulley. So that way I run one serpentine belt. So I'll roughly fit around about there or here, but I don't think I'm going to get my space in there because I want to put my tensioner yep. down the bottom of there. And they usually charge reverse too. Yep. A lot of people will turn around and say, hold on, we've got the alternator going the wrong way, but either way, an alternator will charge, won't yep. it, Joe? Yeah. We've done them in the past and they charge reverse, so it still works perfectly there and it still gives me a lot of room for my elephant trunk when the manifold comes. Joey, how are we going with that alternator? Yeah, interesting. We've got a bit of a drama. That's looking good so far. Well, it looks really well. Don't tell me that's going in the wrong direction. It's going in the wrong, wrong direction. direction. Oh, right. So the outer yeah, body moves yeah. instead of the inner. Yeah. So I need that to tension the other way. So other than that, it all works perfect. 
now we're talking about we're going to have to redesign it or something. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's all fitted nice and it all looks really well. It's just working in the wrong direction. So I've done some research. I've got another one coming and I don't know which way it tensions, but hopefully it's the other way. So. Um, there's no alternative for the alternator anywhere else, is there? Really? No, not really. What about putting it underneath and having it tensioning upwards? Would that help at all? What do you think? Not really. Not without interfering with anything else. It'd be nice if I just had the manifold in it to work out clearances. Yeah, I get it. Mate, unbelievable. Leave it with me and I'll sort something out. All right. All right. OK. OK. Done. Thanks, Joey. How come we that work? Well, still a lot of work to do. I think we're maybe six or seven weeks away. Yeah, absolutely. From stripping the car down. Yeah. Yep. Powder coating. That'll be the next stage. Every time I come back, I'm amazed at how much work's gone on. Well, it's I know. It's such an intricate car. Yeah, the last time you were here, we were in the stage of doing the uh, drive shafts on the diff and the tail shaft, and the craziness, as you can see, the tail shaft is tiny, so we're not going to lose a lot of horsepower through that, you know? No, sir. We're going to have plenty of horsepower to play with. Yeah, it's going to rock and roll, definitely. Mm -hmm.